<laughs> Today I have Novic. Stevanovic. Stevanovic. Okay. Nice. Today I have Anna Stanovic with me. So I still try to pronounce your name, but let's move on. <laughs> so she's originally from Serbia, graduated with a major in dentistry. And then after that, she moved to Milano and then did a master's degree in healthcare management. And nowadays she's living in Switzerland and works as a head of professional education in the oral care industry. And at the side, she's also a certified proctor Gallagher Institute consultant. She's helping individuals and organizations to transform their results. And not only that, she has also been practicing martial arts for more than 15 years. And not only that, and she also is a international bestseller book author, which is called The Beginner with a Black Belt. So today I have a lot of questions prepared for Anna. And uh, Anna, you have a very interesting background and welcome to Fast Track Podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Asi. <laughs> for me, it's so difficult to pronounce your name. So I hope some of the audience, if you speak Serbian <laughs> or if you understand the language, excuse my pronunciation. Uh, I'm eager to find out you were born in Serbia. How come you have moved to Milan and you moved to Switzerland? Like what drives you to have such an international personal experience? I think even when I was even when I was a student, like when I was studying dentistry, I was very active in this like European student organizations, and I used to be at some point even a president of European Dental Student Association. And I traveled with them, and and I realized the the value one has when meeting different cultures and and, and meeting different people. And I, I think this really influenced me a lot. I, I think it really killed my career as a dentist. <laughs> To be very honest, and this is why I decided that it might be good to to go a little bit in a different direction, to travel, and yeah, basically the journey led me to Switzerland eventually. Yeah, so your study and your professional career is in dentistry, oral care. How come you developed yourself at a side as a uh, personal coach? What was your motivation? I, I think it's always when whenever you do something, this is always like it's out of some personal reason. But nobody says, oh, yeah, I want to do this just because people do tend sometimes to try new businesses because they think, okay, new business, it's a good good opportunity. But in this case, I was first a dentist. And as a dentist, I, I felt very much lonely in a dental office. I, I spoke about it in, in quite some podcasts because I think this, this moment of realizing you studied something for six years and then you, you feel a need to, you need to do something different. It's very scary, but it also provides you certain opportunity. And uh, then after my master's, I, I landed in, in Switzerland and I really have, I always say I have a job of my dreams. I work as a head of education and this is something I really love doing. And I, I think this part influenced me a lot in a sense to understand that education really drives a lot, that education is really what changes the world. And, but of course there was this coming to Switzerland, there was this moment of, I don't know actually what I'm doing and I have so many difficulties. And then I started to work on myself. I actually took my own coach basically for the same program I'm teaching now. And I realized that this was basically the best investment I ever made, not only money-wise, but also time-wise, because it's, of course, it's time consuming working on yourself every day for six months or, or more. And uh, then I decided, yeah, this is exactly what I want to be dedicating also part of my time to. And yeah, since 2017, 18, I've been doing this. Can you tell us a little bit more about the program you did last time and the program you're teaching now? Uh, okay. So basically the, the name of the program is called Thinking into Results. And the, the Proctor Gallagher Institute is the founder of the program, especially the co-proctor, the name in, in, in personal development industry. He developed this program as a kind of a, after he, the first program he developed was called, called You Were Born Rich, and he developed this in 1989. And I had this seminar, like 13 12 hour seminar that's now on YouTube, like from 1989. And after I think 20, 30 years of additional experience, he developed thinking into results. And this is a program that now I've been working with people for, for a couple of years. And, and when you say, What is it helping with people? Basically, everybody knows that they can do better than they're currently doing. But sometimes they don't know how. This makes you feel stuck, makes you feel frustrated. And, and through this program, you clear this stuff up. You learn how to set a good goal. You learn what is the setup you need to have. You learn how to fix your paradigms. And you learn 
how to fix your self-image. Basically, we call it the GPS of personal development, goals, paradigms, self-image. And once you learn that, that process, basically, every time you go for a next goal, you go through the same process again, just on a different level. Also, this process that is proven that works helping people to achieve results with this goal, paradigm, and image. I'm very interested. Can you elaborate a little bit more? A goal is easy to understand, right? What's your target? And what about paradigm and image? You will be surprised, actually. It's, it's, not that, it's not that easy as it seems. Majority of people, they know that they need to have goals. They know this, like, you know, this setup of having smart goals. But majority of people actually never have their goal written down. And th this is, I think, one of the first prerequisites of knowing what is the right goal. Like we call it the C-type goal. And then knowing to really write it down and to kind of develop the steps to achieve it. And then when it comes to paradigms, this is uh, basically your belief system that you have. And your belief system is usually expressed as a certain habit that you have. And very many times we try to fix our results by, by fixing our behavior, but usually this doesn't work because you need to fix the cause of your behavior and that is the belief system and you need to work on that. So basically it's like assessing your results in your, in your life and then trying to see, okay, which result am I getting for years now that I really do not want to get? And then asking yourself why? And then working on that part. And the last part is, is the self-image and this is basically the aspect of the same we have a certain belief system about the world. We also have a certain belief system that concerns us. That usually we get when you're small, when you're pretty much unable <laughs> to, to determine uh, whether you are good at math or you're not good at math, but somebody tells you based on certain result that you got, somebody tells you what you suck at math. And then you have your whole life saying, okay, no. Alfred Adler actually had the same issue. He's, I think, that the famous psychologist that he never like because he thought he didn't know it but then one day he realized he actually actually knows math but it was just his belief system that was preventing him to achieve better results so that's also one of the one of the points that you have to work on because if you know that quote like before you can achieve something you first have to become someone that's basically it and that's this third pillar of, of basically goal achieving so the goals the paradigms and the self-image when you say before you are achieving something, you have to become someone. Is it like project oneself to as a new to have a new identity? Yes and no. Basically, you need to be able to you need to be able to become this type of person way before you actually achieve these kind of results. And this is this is something I think when people, especially young people, when they come to me and they say, oh, I want to earn, I don't know, this amount of money. <laughs> I said, so why? I said, yeah, but I want to, I said, look, it's, it's a very, it's a very, not a good set goal because you want to become a person that's able to earn that money. If you have money, you can lose it. Whatever you have, you can lose. Who you become, it's yours forever. And you have to work on becoming it. This is, I'm speaking also about mentality, about behavior of a person that's able to do certain things. So being able to become that way before you actually, you're, you're doing it. Yes, it does in, in contain the part that you need to be able to think like this person, to, to behave like this person. You need to become that person. It's not the fake it till you make it. It's more really becoming, asking yourself, if I was this person, who would I be? And starting from there. Right. Uh, so it's already projecting oneself to become a new person that this person wants to become and then behave in a way that the future self would have behaved instead of the yeah. current self. Yeah, but it's all, this all goes like behavior is really a, the behavior is really just a consequence of your yeah, yeah. change belief system, of your change concept of self and concept of the world around you. So it's not just like changing the behavior, but changing really who you are. And it's just as an example, and later we can talk about more, but. In, in the book that, that I wrote, I described this concept that we have in martial arts where you basically, where they give you a next rank way before you earn it. And then you have it and then you need to become this person and one day reach this rank. So they, they give it to you and you're not there yet. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. So they, that pushes you to start to think of yourself as, as, as this kind of person starts to work more, you work harder, you read more, you do everything because you, you have that, <laughs> that rank until one day 
you come there and said, oh, okay, now I'm there. But then they give you another one. So it's like the chase never stops, but that's basically the concept. You really need to become that person. Okay, now I understand why the title of your book is called Beginner with Black Belt. <laughs> yes, that is basically. And that goes to another concept because the other meaning of the beginner with a black belt means that you have to think from the goal and not to the goal. And that's also the, the thing that I'm speaking about right now. So you have to imagine yourself being there today and look back and say, okay, what do I need to, what do I need to do to be here at this point? So what, what's the steps? And this is really thinking from the goal, thinking from this black belt, even though you're just a beginner. This is so interesting because I have mentioned this few times to so many people nowadays. I'm reading this book. It's called Breaking the Habits of Being Yourself. Um, because who we are today consists of our past memories and experiences. But if we want the future self to be different, we need to think about the future, not think based on how we think today. We have to think if we're already that person, we already achieved that. And then looking back, what would I do to make the future a reality? Yeah, like a very dear friend of mine and a martial artist and a serial entrepreneur, Robin Donike from Australia, he used to live in Japan many years. Sometimes we write to each other. And then he once he wrote me, Anna, we all exist without our stories. Like you exist also without your stories and do not get attached too much to your story, your experience, because the fact that, I don't know if you're religious, but for example, imagine if you were born in Afghanistan, the, the chances are you would be Muslim. If you were born in Serbia, the chances are you would be Orthodox. If you were born just in a different place, you would have a completely different set of beliefs. And then you see people like holding themselves so much to a certain belief system, even though if they would think about it, like <laughs> they exist even without it. And if you, they were born in just in a different place, they would have a completely different set of so, we should not be that strict and, 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 and there are some stuff that just limit us to grow and we should really let go of that. Yeah, that's a very interesting example, the way how to think and to change oneself. And nowadays you like you are helping professionals to transform their results. What are the common challenges they are facing from your experience working with them? I, I think really even for the people that are that are very high up in, in like that they're very high up managers or the people who are like, let's say not having teams, but they're working in, in certain companies, like common thing of, we all have limiting beliefs and we, and there is sometimes you have, you have people coming and says, no, no, I have no, I have no paradigms. And then we start to work with them stuff to two months. Ooh, <laughs> there is something actually. I, I think common thing that we have is that, that we common challenges that we face is that first of all, we really don't have the right goals because even if they have, there is very difficult. They, sometimes they cannot reply the question of why you have that exact goal and not something else. And I, I think it takes time for people to really enter into this process of design because we were thought you don't fantasize, you don't do imagination, you do what, what that you do. You don't, as a kids, we fantasize a lot when we are adults, we don't. So one of the common challenges is actually this fantasizing that people don't get to fantasize. And then once that is set, then beating the belief system, that's really a challenge for all of us, like finding what is that limiting belief and, and beating that one. Can you give us some examples of uh, limiting belief? There's so many actually, <laughs> Yes. but let's say like this, you have, come, you have people coming with, a, with certain personal goals, you have people coming with professional goals. The limiting belief is that you believe that this is how much your time is um, worth, for example, like you're earning, you believe, okay, this is what you're worth. And that's it. Or belief that it's, it's okay. I'm not saying economy is bad. Economy is not, but, but people sometimes focus so much on that, that they forget the stuff that they can do. But there is so many, it's, it's sometimes like you, when you work with people, there's so many diff different beliefs, but I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough is a really limiting belief. And it's, you can just insert it in whatever personal, professional. And that's something that, that self doubt are, are huge when it comes to, and if we're speaking about good people, like all people that come as clients, they're good people, they're hard workers. They really are, they deserve so much, but yet there is a self-doubt of whether I'm good enough. I, I also have the same. I also have the same many times. Am I good enough? If someone came to you and they would like to, they have a goal and they would like to achieve it, but they are not sure if they are capable of achieving it. 
what, what would be the next step? How to remove the limiting belief? What would be the general steps people can take? Okay, that's now I'm speaking like very general because it, for every person there is a little bit different task. But let's say like this: if, if you have a certain, you have something that you really want to achieve, and, and for the past few years, first we assess what is the situation, status quo, basically what what is happening for the past few years, and you can see the the this balance between the current status and, and where you want to be. I think one of the main points is actually not only yes finding. What is the limiting belief? But also, there's always exist one. It, it, there is more, but one is like the one that's, that is really crucial to, to the development. And then replacing it. You cannot just delete the belief. You have to replace it with a new belief. And that is done through a very hard work. First of all, like one of the processes, assessing past successes, like trying on a rational level to understand that this belief is, is not the correct one. It's not just, oh, I tell you, you need to replace it. And then you just repeat a new thing and... Yeah, this is actually trying on a rational level to find, okay, was there an opportunity in my past where this was not, this thing I believe in was actually not correct and starting from there. And then we go with the process, like some basics. I find this very interesting. Even personally, I attended some events. We did some like small exercise. Like one question is what you are proud of yourself. It's so hard for me to think, what am I proud of myself? And then we just did a small exercise. Then I realized that I'm not the person always looking at my wings. When I have some um, achievement, then I move on to next. So in situations that I'm not confident, maybe I should look at what I have achieved in the past. And then I can do it instead of uh, thinking the goal is too big. Maybe I cannot achieve it. Maybe I cannot make it. That I think now I can recognize it's all, also a limiting belief. No, but this is, I, I think good goals are the goals where you have no idea whether you can do it and where it makes you like enthusiastic, but also makes you super scared. I think this is a description of a very, very good, good goal. When I see that, that clients are sometimes frustrated or they're not sure if they can do it, I, I make them make a list of all their past successes, everything they can remember in this area, but they, they made it. And usually when they write the list down and they see the list, they're like, oh, I actually might be able to make it. Yeah. I'm a badass. <laughs> Exactly. We're all badasses. In general, how to stay at peak performance of people make this breakthrough, achieving results, how to stay on it. If you're like every other human and, and you want to grow and goals are there to help you grow. Goals are not there because you want to have more, whatever, more money or more, whatever you, you want to grow. This is the purpose of the goal to get you grow. And this growth is, it never stops. But an advice maybe of, of really how to keep the performance and how to keep this growth is rituals. You have to have your rituals, whether you're doing sports or you're not doing sports, whether you're CEO or just an, like rituals are there to really keep you grounded, keep you balanced, help you to keep performance. And yeah, and everybody has the question is just which kind of rituals they have. Either they have productive rituals or they're not that productive, but everybody has them. Rituals could be, you mean something like uh, doing sports regularly, uh, meditate, or like a write success journals, something like that? Whatever it is, you just have to do it every single day. Like I never, I, when, I, when I speak to people, I said, I don't care if you're studying three hours a day or you're studying 15 minutes a day, but I want you to do it every day. This continuous learning or continuous doing something is, is essential. It's how you get a habit, but this is also how you get grounded. And, and imagine if you're studying or if you're working on yourself 15 minutes a day, I mean, you have 365 days, there is this law of accumulation where you actually get to accumulate a lot. It's like living 10 bucks every day on the side, but every single day with time, it becomes a lot. And this is why it's important. This is another reason why it's important to have rituals. I think it's just, even you do it 15, 10 minutes a day on something that's uh, helping you towards achieving the bigger goals. But once you do it every single day, the idea and the work like a seat into the mind every day, the likelihood of achieving is bigger. Yeah. I immediately think about my German learning experience that <laughs> I think is totally um, necessary for someone to learn a new language. Just even 10 minutes, five minutes, just do it every day. And this is the thing, this is what one of the consultants, colleague of mine said, this is something I really appreciated. When you're adopting a new habit or a new ritual or developing your new self-image, he says, look, every day you, you get up and you do this with the intention, like you, you get up and you say, okay, 
I have to do this, now you do it. Until one day you get up and it just happens automatically. And then you're right. And then you just keep doing it, you keep, keep doing it automatically. But it's very important to do it until you reach the day when, when you don't have to do it because it comes naturally. Can I put it this way? It's like we are learning to become someone doing something and then the, the learning, the doing part is the small actions every single day. Once it become a habit, once it become a subconscious action, like driving, it become a state. Yes, you yes. become who you are or you become who you want to be and it become a yes, state yes. of fact. And then next question I want to ask is, earlier we talked about martial arts and you have been practicing it for more than 15 years. Why you pick martial arts? I was 16 and I was training bas basketball at the time. And I really wanted to be in a national team playing basketball, but I have to admit something like I sucked. Like I was an amazing training player, but when we would come to a big game, I would completely be blocked. I could not score nothing. And I was a scorer. So it was, it's really bad if you cannot score and that's, you should do this. You're like, and at that time I decided to do some like self-defense because I thought it was important. I was a girl, I was 16. I never went to the same places with my older brothers. So I thought, okay, maybe it's, it's good. And then I started it. And I, I think now when I look back, it's, it's quite clear why I did it at that time. It was just, I did it because I liked it. Yes, I learned some stuff from self-defense, but then I continued doing it because it really, it, it helped me learn how to live life. So then I started doing it from a, for a different perspective. Basically, I, I learned so much in Dojo about like how you should live your life that it, it became really a, it became my ritual. Like even now, I, I go once a week now because it's in Zurich, so I have to travel. But every Sunday, like I sit on the train and I say, people go to church, I go to my dojo. Basically, martial arts have given me so much knowledge, but also like the experience of, of how one should lead a purposeful life. Can you elaborate? What is it with martial arts that you start to reflect on the purpose of life? What, what is it about martial arts? It's funny, funny because, because uh, I recently realized that all the things I did in life, regardless, like whether it were martial arts, uh, dentistry, because I actually deal with preventing dentistry in, in my job, or, or were only, I, I did only one thing all during the past 20 years. I basically wanted not to be a victim, basically to move from victim to, to, to a hero. And martial arts have been basically the, the first part of that yeah, you help yourself and your colleagues not to be victims on the street that's basically what you're doing but then it goes so much beyond then you really move into okay how not to be a victim of your mind because when when you're doing martial arts there is like a lot there is a lot about your mindset and how you're thinking and how you're behaving and i started to find so many parallels between martial arts and coaching that it started to be like a, a game for me. This is how the book happened. And I, I never thought I would actually write a book, but the first time I started to realize that the lessons are the same, just maybe the language is different. I started to write them down. And, and this is how basically, this is how in the end it turned out into, into the book. And then this book, Beginner with a Black Belt, what is it about? This book is really a small guidance through this art of, of self-mastery or self-leadership, put it whatever you want. Although well, I think self-mastery is a little bit deeper context than self-leadership. And this book is divided actually in, in three different chapters or three different big uh, parts, even though the book is not so big, but the, the book is divided in three parts. And I actually took the part from the book that we have in martial arts is called the Tenshi Jin Konomaki or the principles of heaven, earth, and man. And I took the GPS of goal setting or GPS of the results from the, from coaching. And the first part is basically the principles of heaven and speaking about our vision, our goal setting, our willingness. So this, this is the, where we want to be. The second part is principles of earth, which is basically the paradigms. And there I speak about experience, about uh, space, about control and everything else. And then the last part is the principles of human, which is self-image. And then we, is, I speak about the attitude, self-image and everything that's connected to that part. So basically the book is like a small gui guideline or guidance uh, 
from where you want to go to where you are to who you are. Basically replying the three questions. I, I said in the beginning, it replies the questions of where you want to go, where you're now and who you are. And where can people find this book? And it is on Amazon. So I think it's basically in every country. So you can find it online, both okay. Kindle and, and paperback as well. The title is very unique. I like it. It's called Beginner with a Black Belt. Now I really understand why you name it this way. And um, is there any other ways that people can contact you if they're interested in receiving consultation session with you, connect with you, follow up with what's going on with your life journey? Yeah, uh, I have a website. It's my first name, last name. Uh, so anastemanovic.com and uh, have LinkedIn, Facebook. Basically, people can find me there. I still did not open Instagram account because I really cannot afford another social media <laughs> network, but who knows, maybe I should do it as well, but it's easy to find me on and it's, yeah, I'm there. Yeah. Okay. So, so it will also be in the show notes. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for being here, Anna. Thank you for having me, Elsie. It was a pleasure.